As most viewers will probably know, almost every tech company under the sun is recording your data and selling it to the highest bidder. And the worst part of all is that you're not getting a single cent. This is why I respect today's sponsor, Ipsos I say, a nearly 50 year old market research company who wants to pay you for just giving your opinions. As it turns out, companies barely understand millennials and they sure as hell don't understand Gen Z. I'm a threat all over Europe and I just pwned half the world from backstage. So eat it Volcano Mom 53. Ooh! Which means by just answering questions about topics you like anyway, you can earn yourself a nice chunk of change. As a degenerate Australian, I only had access to PayPal gift cards, but other countries can choose to deposit money into anything, from DoorDash to Amazon. I likely expect that many viewers have tried these types of survey apps before and never earned a dime, but Ipsos is literally the third largest research agency in the world. Viewers aren't going to get rich from completing a few surveys while you're watching something on Netflix, but paying for your favorite battle pass every few months isn't exactly a bad deal. If you could stand to earn a few easy dollars, then a link to sign up to I say will be down below, because if your data is being sold anyway, the money is going to feel much better in your pocket. With that out of the way, let's roll the video. In 1998, the US Patents and Trademarks Office would issue a patent for the video game company, Namco, best known for creating Pac-Man. The patent itself is a long and incredibly boring read, but it essentially gave Namco the exclusive rights to use many games within loading screens, a restriction that would stand until November 2015. This was the golden age of the loading screen, when Skyrim would take an entire minute to load into a building, and solid state drives could only be afforded by Colombian drug lords. Over these 17 long years, the video game industry was held hostage by this one piece of paper, which was collecting dust, in a patent office in Virginia. To be clear, being able to trademark video game characters, or the worlds they inhabit, is entirely fair game. Characters and franchises are extremely valuable, and when GTA 6 makes a billion dollars in under a day, they'll have their trademark name to thank for it. It's when we start getting into specific mechanics, where things get a little dicey, because when an entire medium is derivative of what came before, kicking down the ladder, after it's just been climbed, is a pretty scummy thing to do. Perhaps the most famous example in recent years is in 2021, when Warner Brothers was able to patent the Nemesis system from their Shadow of Mordor series. For the uninitiated, the Nemesis system allowed both enemies and allies to remember previous events witnessed or acted upon by the player and dynamically behave differently as a result. This could be as simple as orcs commenting that you killed their friend, or as advanced as having your life saved from certain death because they owed you from the time you saved their own. To the game's credit, this system is still unlike anything the games industry had seen before, and there were reviewers at the time, predicting that this was going to be adopted by a huge number of AAA games over the next few years. Incredibly however, this trend never quite caught on, as either other developers had no interest in developing such a system, or its impressive complexity meant that they couldn't pull it off if they tried. Whatever the case, other games outside of Warner Brothers won't be making such a cool system anytime soon, as due to the patent, it won't be freely available until the year 2035, two more console generations away. The strangest part about this patent is that the game in which it was first introduced is now nearly 10 years old, and Warner Brothers themselves haven't actually done anything with the system since Shadow of War released in 2017. The patent holder isn't using the idea, other game companies can't use it without paying a hefty fee, and players who like the concept are quite unfortunately shit out of luck.
players familiar with the Shadow of Mordor series, will also very likely point out the obvious, as the games themselves are very derivative of other titles that came before. Shadow of Mordor is just an Assassin's Creed game, but with wild fantastical abilities, no fall damage, super fast climbing, and a nearly passable story. Wow. Yeah. It's... Good, good job. Good job. You liked it? Of course I did. Do you have any thoughts? Notes? No. Ironically, Ubisoft would actually go on to copy all of these features when they made Assassin's Creed Odyssey. When looking at other video game patents, it's honestly astounding that many of these were even allowed. Other games can't use anything resembling Mass Effect's dialogue wheel. Sonic's corkscrew maneuver from earlier games couldn't be copied by any other company, and something as simple as the arrow from Crazy Taxi was protected under patent law. Even modern mechanics in Ubisoft games, such as the last known position system, or being able to mark and execute people in Ghost Recon, are both protected game mechanics. Viewers who played games in the early 2000s will almost certainly remember Guitar Hero, a game series made famous for serious cases of carpal tunnel, and the people who could play through the fire and flames on Expert. Activision would actually patent many features from the franchise, including its distinctive scrolling note highway and guitar-shaped controller. In its own defense, Activision would state that the patent was necessary to protect its intellectual property and pointed out that it had even licensed the technology to Electronic Arts for its rock band games. With this in mind, critics would argue that these types of patents mainly impact smaller independent developers, as they are often much less equipped to navigate such a legal minefield. Objection! There is however, an upside to these patents. As when a company comes up with a particularly scummy way to monetize their customers, they'll very often attempt to gain the exclusive rights for their newly invented milking technique. Activision Blizzard for example, currently holds a patent that will make your fucking skin crawl. The patent in question would put weight into a matchmaking system for which skins players had equipped, meaning those who had recently purchased a shiny new tracer skin would purposely be put up against lower skilled players. This would not only make the person who bought the skin more satisfied following its purchase, but it would also make this player stand out among others within the server. This was designed to push other people to replicate the star player in the lobby and subconsciously push them to buy this skin as well. As you might imagine, this doesn't just extend to cosmetics, as in the Call of Duty franchise for example, there are weapons that can be obtained from battle pass progression, which can be accelerated by paying with real money. This means that not only can Activision make these new guns objectively more powerful, which they do, but they can also match the players who bought the battle pass early to lower skilled players who have not committed to spending more. This is the equivalent of casinos providing complimentary rooms for their big betters, because as long as the whales are happy, who gives a shit if the average player is getting stomped? I couldn't find any evidence that Activision Blizzard have actually implemented this system, but anyway you slice it, video game patents all seem to spell bad news for players. This isn't to say that I'm against patents altogether, or want a world where companies don't have legal recourse for their games being ripped off, but this is an extremely fast paced industry, and locking out entire game mechanics for up to 20 years is objectively insane. This is what video games looked like 20 years ago, and through incremental improvement and developers taking inspiration from each other, the entire world benefits from a more refined art form. Imagine if the inventors of the double jump, checkpoints, or skill trees had decided to patent their ideas and just think about how fucking far into the stone age this industry would still be sitting. Entire genres would cease to exist, games themselves would need to be shorter to compensate for the lack of player safeguards. And concepts such as build diversity may have never even been considered. These are extreme examples to be sure, but you know for a fucking fact that some of these companies would try to patent this shit if they thought they could get away with it. Perhaps the best argument against these patents might actually be a trend in the modern games industry itself. In recent years, established franchises are being challenged and even toppled by the new kids on the block, meaning game companies can't always rest on their laurels and pump out the same game year after year. 
The Titanfall series was literally just a bunch of ex-Call of Duty developers who wanted to make their own game, and as anyone who played those games at their peak will tell you, they made COD seem primitive in comparison. Moving on, the game publisher Paradox Interactive seems to have specifically made it their goal to destroy the Sims franchise by offering better versions of their own games. City Skyline seems to have completely destroyed any hope of a new SimCity game, and with its new title, looking to directly poach the Sims audience, Electronic Arts might actually have to offer a reasonable game, at a reasonable price, to actually compete. Another recent example is likely the upcoming shooter, The Finals, which was developed by a team of ex-Battlefield developers, who wanted to make their own game. Despite the recent Battlefield admittedly reworking its most recent entry, based on player feedback, it's clear that the franchise has been both limited by its own appeal, and stifled by its poor attempts to innovate. The finals actually takes many Battlefield staples, such as destructibility, and a wide range of gadgets, and arguably improves them far beyond what they could have otherwise implemented, and when you talk to those lucky enough to get hold of a beta build, the results speak for themselves. Once again, this wouldn't at all be possible had DICE been more liberal with its use of patents, and ideally, the next Battlefield game is able to learn from the improvements made by the developers of the finals. In this industry, we see players push back particularly hard against egregious monetization, grindy game design, or poor optimization, but patented mechanics are very often overlooked. It's likely that this is because the effects of such patents are never directly felt, and when they are, it's only several years after they are initially filed. After all, people don't tend to notice the absence of something that never existed in the first place. With this in mind however, you need to wonder how much further this industry could have come had such patents never been allowed in the first place. Entire genres may have been created, indie studios could have revolutionized concepts that had long been stagnant, and established juggernauts might actually be incentivized to push their respective niches even further. This is the video game equivalent of the library of Alexandria burning to the ground, because we really don't know what we could have had, but this doesn't mean that it's too late to put out the fire 